Tonight, the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office and Coroner, the District Attorney, uh, they're releasing autopsy findings in the Kendrick Johnson case. Thanks for joining us for Bounce News at 7. I'm Rockman Johnson. Now, there was a protest today at Lowndes County High School as the Lowndes County Sheriff Sheriff's Office released information in the results of the Kendrick Johnson autopsy case, ruling his death an accident as a result of positional asphyxia, which means he suffocated. Now, the sheriff says the investigation was extensive. There were multiple forensic tests, including DNA samples and interviews of more than 100 people. But the family is less than satisfied. They still think that foul play was involved. Now, the National Action Network, which is headed by the Reverend Al Sharpton, has organized a rally for this coming Saturday at Serenity Christian Church in Valdosta. Now, the Reverend Al is scheduled to attend, and tonight via Skype uh, is our attorney, Kwame Thompson, to comment. And on the phone, we have the counsel for the Johnson family, C.B. King from Albany. Uh, counsel Johnson and Counsel Thompson, how are you gentlemen this evening? Good evening. I'm fine and you. Thank you for having me. Thank you both for joining us. Let's start out with you. Uh, uh, Mr. King, you are the, the family's counsel, and we understand that, again, this, uh, these findings were just released earlier today. What's the uh, family's position on this? They're saying that it was an accident. What's the family saying? Uh, the findings, uh, as expressed in the autopsy report, actually confirm our belief that he was murdered. What is it in those, in that, uh, the findings that confirm the belief? I know the family has said this from day one, that they believe that there was foul play at work. What are those things in there, those specific things, if you can discuss with us, that make them believe that this was a murder and not an accident? Well, I can't express to you everything um, because we do have to have it confirmed by our experts. But... As you've already pointed out, uh, asphyxia, and including positional asphyxia, only means that a person's ability to breathe adequately has been cut off. And one of the major circumstances in which that condition arises is police restraint maneuvers. Interesting. And Interesting. And, yes, as a matter of fact, if you were to check um, certain FBI publications, uh, that point of view would be sustained. Now, Kwame, I know that you have been monitoring this case with your firm in Atlanta. And initially, when they were looking, the family was looking for the autopsy report to come back, and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation was saying that uh, they couldn't. Uh, at the time because of budget issues. Um, what has caused them to uh, come up with these findings and what do you think from what you've seen? I know you've had a chance to look at the findings today. What's your take on it from the outside looking, uh, looking at the case? Well, as I stated earlier, and, and you and I had this conversation, we believe that the issue about the budget shortfalls was nothing more than a red herring, and it sounded like a cover-up then. The issues that the community, and I'm sure that the family has, is that the sheriff initially stated that there was no foul play, and there were reports that the uh, cause of death was accidental. The sheriff then came back in April and stated that they treat every death such as this as a homicide and then also the coroner was not called immediately to the scene of the death and we know now by georgia state law under ocga 45 1624 it states that where there's a suspicious death that the coroner should be called to the scene of the accident and there are a lot of other inconsistencies throughout the record let me ask you this, Mr. King. What are the next steps? Now that we know this has been released, I understand that the Justice Department has been asked to be involved in the case. And, of course, there's a rally on Saturday uh, with uh, Reverend Sharpton and the Action Network. What are the next steps that the family is going to take to uh, get some kind of resolution or at least find out what happened in their eyes to their son? Well, previously, and that is several weeks ago, we had written the coroner a letter asking him to conduct a coroner's inquest. And a coroner's inquest is essentially like a trial. He has the authority to subpoena records uh, coming from both the sheriff's office and anyone else for that matter and cause individuals to take the witness stand and testify under oath. Uh, what we hope now that the um, results of the autopsy are in 
and pointing out the inconsistency, inconsistencies that were just noted by my fellow uh, counsel or attorney, um, we think we've got the basis upon which to persuade Mr. Watson, who is the coroner, to uh, convene such an inquest. And uh, then, of course, we will also be submitting the um, uh, autopsy report to our expert for examination. And by the way, we did, as of yesterday, secure a court order to then exhume the body. Ah, okay. Well, we'll be following this case very closely. I'm sure that there's more uh, to it. Thank you so much for joining us again. C.B. King, who's the uh, counsel for the Johnson family, as well as Kwame Thompson uh, from Wooderson uh, Thompson Valburn in Atlanta. Again, that's about the Kendrick Johnson case. We'll keep you informed of new developments. Thank you, gentlemen.